Hello and welcome to Between the Lines. I'm your host, Glenn Mann. And I'm Matt Vito. This week, we get you in the locker room with KU's women's soccer team and women's volleyball team. For halftime, Brianna spent time with Imani from the women's soccer team. It might not be her sport. BTL's Player of the Week, Taylor Capoferri, from the tennis team, joins us as well. Stay tuned. BTL is coming up next. Hello and welcome back to our second edition of the Weekend Update. I'm Glenn Mann, joined by my lovely co-host Matt Vito. we got plenty of things to catch you up on from this past weekend, so without further ado, let's get things started. We're going to start things off with the women's soccer team, who, as of midnight last night, are now the number two ranked team in the country. But before they played this game this past weekend, they were number three, so we'll stick to it for now. So the number three ranked women's soccer team continues its historic start to the 2017 season. They won their eighth consecutive game, which is only one shy of tying the school record for the most consecutive wins to start a season. This weekend, they faced off against Edinburgh on the road, and they picked up a convincing 4-1 victory. So tell us how it went, Matt. Oh, well, the Kusan offense featured four different goal scorers in the contest, which were Kate Martin, Alyssa Ryan, Maddie Moore, and Randy Smith. With the goal, Maddie Moore is now tied for the most goals on the team this season. As for the senior captain, Alyssa Ryan, this was her first goal of the young season. The Golden Bear defense continues to be stellar this season, as this was only the fourth goal all season that they surrendered. The Golden Bears are currently sitting atop of the PSAC standings with their unblemished record. Gannon and Bloomsburg are tied for second. Awesome stuff to hear. Kutztown this weekend will be going up against Mercyhurst, but today, after this episode ends, they will have already faced Westchester, one of our biggest rivals. So it will be an exciting match today, and we'll have Coach Eric Burstein on with us later for an interview. Moving along, we have the football team. So this weekend, they played the Millersville Marauders inside of Andre Reed Stadium at University Field on Kutztown's Family Day where they won a convincing game 41-21, to their third consecutive game. So, Matt, give us a little bit of detail on that one. Well, the player of the game for the Golden Bears was Craig Reynolds, who posted 161 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns. One of the touchdowns included a 53-yard punt return for a touchdown. This was the first time a go the Golden Bears returned a punt for a touchdown this season and since 2010. One of the most exciting plays of the game came on a hook and ladder by Nate Haraka, who caught a pass from DiGabo behind the line of scrimmage, and then Harka dropped back and found a wide open Craig Reynolds in the corner of the end zone. On the defensive side of the ball, Tajir Jefferson led the Golden Bears with 12 tackles. Alvin Crater was, also, was a force in the trenches for Kutztown as he led the team with 2.5 sacks. As a whole, the team came up with five sacks and 10 tackles for loss. It's awesome stuff to hear, and this weekend the Golden Bears look to make it four victories in a row where they have a huge matchup against the biggest rival we have, Westchester, at noon. This game will be on the road, and both teams are currently in a tie for second place in the PSAC East right behind Shippensburg. So a very important game for playoff standings and a very important game for the pride of the Golden Bear team. Then moving things along to field hockey, where the number nine women's field hockey team faced off against Seton Hill this weekend on the road and picked up a huge 3-0 victory that puts them now into third place in the PSAC Conference, one of the more tough conferences across the country in women's field hockey. So tell us how the game go, Matt. Well, Kira Wozniak was a star for Kutztown this weekend as she posted two goals for the Maroon Gold. She currently leads the team with seven goals in the season. The second goal was scored by freshman Trinity Ponton. She is right behind Wozniak with six goals. Ponton is also chasing a record by former KU great Anna Bame, 
who had the most goals by a freshman with eight. Chardonnay Hope displayed another impressive showing in net for the Golden Bears as she came away with eight saves and her fourth shutout of the season. It's great stuff to hear, Matt. The Golden Bears will now hit the road this weekend as they face off against Slippery Rock in some more PSAC action. And the game is set to start at noon on Saturday. Fingers crossed for the Golden Bears. And then finally, we have the volleyball team where they had some tough PSAC West opponents. Kind of hard to fault them, but they did drop two matches. Well, Kutztown played Claren on Friday, and things started out well for them. As they picked up the victory in the first set, but unfortunately dropped three straight sets after that to lose the match. And then the very next day they went up against IUP. Not much success there. They were unable to pick up a set victory. They played tough on some stretches, but they couldn't close out the deal and unfortunately dropped both of their matches this past weekend. And they'll look to bounce back this upcoming weekend as they'll be facing off against California University of Pennsylvania and then Seton Hill Friday and then Saturday. But unfortunately, guys, that's all the news we have for you today. So be sure to stay tuned for more Between the Lines. Welcome to Halftime, and I'm your host, Brianna, and I'm here with... Imani. And she's going to tell us some things about the women's soccer here at KU. So, Imani, how long have you been playing women's soccer for KU? I've been playing since my freshman year, so I've been playing three years now. I'm a junior. Love and it. what is your major? Um, I'm a psychology major and a Spanish minor. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> what is your position here on the women's soccer team? I am one of the three goalkeepers here at KU. So you make sure the balls don't get in? No, they don't get in the net. <sighs> that's what we're talking about. And also, could you tell us how long have you been playing soccer? I've been playing soccer ever since I was six. six and what years got old? you into soccer? Because, I mean, that's a young age to be playing the sport. It is, yeah. Um, what really got me into soccer was the fact that there's a big field behind my house. So I would always, like, watch and see all these little kids playing. And I dragged my mom out one weekend, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I want to play. So ever since then, I've been playing soccer. Okay, Imani, can you tell me what we're going to do here on the field? Yeah, we're going to be learning about the back foot. And what is that? <laughs> it's basically the building blocks of KU women's soccer. It's really easy. She say easy, I say hard. Okay. So, if you want to go that way, use this foot to go that this way. way. Yes. And this foot to go that way. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay. So clearly, I need more practice at soccer. I can never be on the women's soccer team, but that's fine. On this week's halftime show, I'm Brianna Barco, and this is Imani from the women's soccer team. And when will the game be? The next home game is Wednesday, September 27th at 3 p.m. against Westchester. Ooh, rivalry. Definitely come out. So that's this week's halftime show. I'm Brianna Barco. See you at the half. Next week we have Tyler against who? Welcome back to Between the Lines, and today I am joined inside the locker room by the lovely, the talented, Mr. Eric Burstein of the women's soccer team. Hello, sir. How you doing? Good. Pleasure to see you. So, we're going to be talking about the upcoming match. And then today, this episode will be airing after their big match against Westchester. So, Coach, let's dive a little bit in here. So, last year you played against Westchester in the national tournament. 
Big game, came out on top with that big header towards the end of the game. How do you see yourself matching up with them this year in this uh, Westchester squad? Yeah, we're very young. Uh, Westchester's very young. Um, I think tactically we're playing very, very well this year. I think last year we figured our tactics and our style out a bit late. Uh, which I think attributed to the late run in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. So this year we came in, we knew how we were going to play, and I think everyone's really on the same page. So I think because of our, our rotation and because everyone is really bought into what they need to do and understands their roles and responsibilities, I feel pretty good about the game. Awesome stuff to hear. And you mentioned that both teams are young, but you got to admit that your younger girls are playing like they're seniors. You have Emily's work and you have Maddie Moore. Even some of the freshmen, Randy Smith and Anna Hall, are playing at a very extremely high level. So what would you say attributes to that? Is it because of their dedication in practice? Are you just the best recruiter in the PSAC? <laughs> or what do you got going here? Well, listen, successful teams need, first and foremost, good players, and we have that. Um, I think the coaching staff we have this year, um, Sharif Saver, Mark Laudenslager, we, we have a really good chemistry. Uh, we, we were very consistent with what we're teaching. And, and overall, I think we've done a really good job of explaining what it is we need from the players. But in, in saying that, the players have done an unbelievably good job of buying into it, believing in it, and just executing. Absolutely. Um, so so, I, you know, this has been a great group to work with as it was last year, uh, but I think we're a little further ahead tactically with this group than we were with the group last year. And you also have to attribute some of that to leadership. So their three captains, Alyssa Ryan, Morgan Staley, and Hannah Oren, have been staples here at the program, so it's good to see them being the leaders for these girls moving forward. Now, you mentioned that we've been doing very well this – you've been doing very well this season. Sorry, I'm just a big fan of the team. I like to say <laughs> wave, but what are you going to say? I think the biggest thing that you have to say, though, is that your defense has just been lights out. I mean, through the first eight games, the team has only surrendered four goals, and I believe it was through the first five games you surrendered none. Correct. And that is led by Morgan Staley. But you've also had some young girls contributing, like Anna Hall doing pretty well on right. defense. So what would you say is probably the most – important key to your defensive success? Is it because of scheme or are we just outclassing these other girls? Sure. Um, well, organization, I mean, for years our program has pride, you know, has been a pride of our program has been how well we defend. So we don't like to concede a lot of goals. We like to get a lot of shutouts and we've had very good defenders and very good leaders in the back to do that. We also have three very talented goalkeepers in Amani Taylor, Jenna Bracken uh, and McKenna Zerby. So no matter who we have to play, if we have injuries, if there's issues, we've got players who can step in and feature and do really, really well right away going off of what you're saying with the goalkeepers so the first three games I saw I noticed that you played three different goalkeepers I'm guessing that was just to try and get a feel of the season moving forward sure who are you liking so far I mean, they, they've all three of them have been performing well right but Amani Taylor has some of the more veteran experience sure. Jenna Bracken stepped in played well last year but she's still only a sophomore right so you have to imagine moving forward that maybe Amani might have a little bit of the leeway on these closer games because of her veterans. Yeah, I mean, what's really interesting about it is we, we and you're right, we have used a lot of different goalkeepers for different games, pr primarily because we needed to see who was going to kind of rise to the occasion and who might just kind of not be in a, in a good run of form. Mm -hmm. um, and as we've gone through the season with Amani and Jenna in particular, they're so close. So you're, you're dividing these, you know, making decisions on playing times by the thinnest of margins. Absolutely. Uh, McKenna being a freshman, incredibly talented uh, and would certainly start at a number of PSAC schools. Um, just needs a little bit more time, but has done very, very well. Uh, Jenna right now we feel has the hot hand. We feel like she's been really, really sharp, and Amani is just right behind her. So, I mean, there are days we could really pick a name out of a hat and we'd be fine going with any one of the three. It's a great problem to have when you have goalie depth because you never want to see when somebody's slumping that you don't have sure. someone to go back to. But it seems to me like you have three goalies who at any given time could step in and perform at a top level. Now. I want to bring up a name from before. Sure. Do, you, do you remember a, a girl? Her name was uh, Sam Costello. Yeah, very well. She was she was pretty good, right? <laughs> pretty good, yes. Well, I mean, we have a pretty good striker in Emily's working, and I think that she has shown flashes where she has shown similar skill sets to Sam. Maybe not so much on the one-on-one -on -one balls, right? But I think that she has the stride. I think she has the boot to go with it. So I think that. We have someone in development here. Tell me a little bit more about Emily that yeah. you might not know. I mean, I, I, to, in my opinion, I think Emily's one of the best attacking players in the country. Um, mm -hmm. She has really developed well. I mean, if you consider the fact that she's still battling some fitness issues and has done unbelievably well this year, there's times she's getting on the field for 25, 30 minutes a half, not playing 90 minutes where Sam Costello did. Mm -hmm. And statistically, Emily's working for the amount of time she spends on the field to what she's getting in goals and assists. She's far better than, than Sam Costello. Um, but you're right. They're very 
very similar players, and I think as, as, as Emily continues to progress, as Emily continues to develop, she's going to become one of not only the best players we've ever had in this program, but certainly an, another All-American and potentially one of the best attacking players to have ever played in Division II. Speaking of All-Americans, we also have Maddie Moore, the sophomore midfielder. It seems to me like she's taken more of a field general role this year where she's distributing the ball well. She doesn't lead the team in assists, I don't believe, nope. but she... She's, she's facilitating pretty well. So like, tell me what her development has been so from freshman All-American now heading into her season as a preseason All-American sure. with all the expectations in the world. Well, and that's the thing. It's the challenge isn't what she does on the field. It's how she handles the pressure, and she's been very, very good. I mean, she's tied with Emily for goals. Um, she has seven so far this year. Mm -hmm. She had 11, 11 la all of last year. But she is the first name in every scouting report, so every time she takes the field, people know where she is, and they try to deal with her. But she's been very, very good. And in moments of the game where we need something extra, where we're you know facing a bit of adversity, you can see Maddie kind of turns on a second gear. Mm -hmm. And she's very difficult to deal with. Still, certainly one of the best players in the PSAC, oh, yeah. uh, without uh, without question, one of the best players in the country. But she has been amazing. And you're right, she has played a little bit of a different role. But every single game, you see moments of that game where she starts to really lift her energy right. and you know, kind of perform at a higher level. And it kind of runs through the entire team. But she's been fantastic this there, year. There's always one play in the game where you just look and say, "That's why she's an All-American." You get like, even if it's just a, a nice touch pass, right. on. A swing out, out to the onto the wing, but it's just it's a pleasure to see her play. And I'm sure moving forward, she's going to be great. Now, so for something that the fans back home, if you had to give us one under the radar player on this roster moving forward, who would you say that these fans should be keeping an eye on? Uh, well, without question, it's Kate Martin. I mean, Kate okay. Martin this year um, again, a player last year as a freshman who didn't get a tremendous amount of time, uh, and then actually started and played 90 minutes in the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, and the Final Four mm -hmm. uh, because tactically she's a very intelligent player. Uh, but what she's added to our team is, an, is, an, is a tremendous amount of depth, but just incredible consistency. She's probably the most consistent player we have. Uh, we've used her as a, as a holding, more defensive central midfielder. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've actually now moved her out into a, a wide forward slash midfield role, and she's been dynamite for us there. Um, and again, she does a lot of work that goes under the radar because we do have big, big time players in Emily's work and, and, and Maddie Moore. Um, but Kate, to me, has been probably our best player because of what she adds to the collective group, not just what she does individually. Well, that's a pretty ballsy statement. And the fact that all three of them are sophomores, correct? So moving, yes. moving along forward for the program, that's just got to be so relieving as a coach and as the head of the program to realize that you got this for another two and a half years and that's going to be great for this program's success and I'm sure that you're excited just as we all are. Now the most important question, the most serious, honest question, I need an answer from you. Can I be your assistant head coach? Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> that's all the time that we have today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Glenn Mann. This is Coach Eric Burstein. Stay tuned for more Between the Lines. I'm Taylor Capaferi, my major is psychology. I play tennis and I'm the player of the week. I've been playing since freshman year of high school. Um, I was at the beach actually one summer and me and my mom were just hitting and she was basically telling me like, oh, you should try out for the team. So I tried out for my high school team. I get up really early. I eat a good breakfast. I usually hit around a little bit, and then I just talk to my teammates and we prepare for the match. Um, I would say my biggest inspiration is my parents. They've really helped me out with my tennis and they've encouraged me. They come to every match. Um, at Kutztown, it was definitely my last match, which was last year. It was with my doubles partner. She was a senior. Um, we played these two girls, they're really good, and we ended up pulling it off. We were losing at the beginning of the match, and we just pushed through it. And then for high school, it would be playing with my little sister. She was a freshman, and I was a senior, and we got to actually go to states together, and that was really special. Well, since I've started playing tennis, I've definitely made a lot of friends through it, even some girls that I've played against. Um, we've had like times in the off, like when we're not playing, we've gotten to get to know each other. So I definitely say I've met a lot of people through tennis. Um, 
Um, I'd say my senior year when I won the league and then I got to go to districts and that was also the year that I got to play with my little sister. So I had a few accomplishments in that year. So I did enjoy my senior year a lot. Uh, it's definitely hard, especially because I'm also on the dance team. So I have like multiple practices. Um, but I'd say like the time that I have off, I get to go study. Um, I don't obviously I can't hang out with friends as much as I'd want to, but I, I can manage it. My favorite tennis player is definitely Serena Williams. Uh, Kutztown was actually the last school I visited. I got to meet with a few of the teammates and I just felt like they were, like we connected pretty well and I met the coach and I love the coach. Like she definitely cares about every single player on our team. So I just felt like I really fit there. Welcome to the locker room. I'm here today joined by Coach Gump and Maddie Kay. I'm Matt Vito and they are part of the volleyball team here at Kutztown. Um, you guys recently faced off against Indiana in a 3-0 losing effort this weekend. What could you guys have done better to pull out the W in this case? I think probably the difference in the match was they were a little bit better in transition opportunities. I thought we played really good defense. Uh, in fact, you know, their, their coach was extremely complimentary of our defense after the match. We just struggled to turn that defense into offense, and I think that was the area of the match where, where they had the advantage that, that ultimately was the difference. Um, the Bears and IUP were tied at 21 in the second set. You guys made a good comeback. What went wrong in the set in the final moments? I don't remember, <laughs> to, to, to be honest. Um, maybe I've repressed that already. Um, since mm -hmm. since Saturday, you know, it, it, when you get into that the sta that stage of, of sets, it, you know, it can be a little thing here, a little thing there. Um, you know, they have you know a couple of really really good players. One of their outsides um, is is one of the best players in the conference, and if I remember correctly, she she had a couple of big kills down the stretch. Uh, Maddie, uh, what position do you play? Um, I'm actually back in setting. I used to be setter and then I went DS and now I'm back in setting and I love it. <laughs> okay well uh, what kind of goals have you set for yourself this season? Um, well one of my main goals um, I really want to get athlete of the week one week. Um, I just think um, I've been really pushing myself. Um, it's not easy to get out of a setting position and go back into it. Um, so I've just been pushing myself um, to get that and also um, not just for myself, but I really want to lead our team. I feel like um, probably in the past couple of years, I think we've lacked like leadership on and off the court. So that's mainly what I've been focusing on. And uh, Coach, what do you expect for the team this season? Well, it, Maddie mentioned the leadership that, that she hopes to bring, and that's going to be an important thing because we have a really young team of our 20 players, 10 are freshmen, 2 are transfers. So 60% uh, of our team is new to the program, new to the university, and so that leadership is important. Uh, my expectation is that we'll continue to grow and get better as the season goes on. I think we've made a lot of progress to this point, and I expect that to continue. How does the team get along? How's the chemistry in the locker room? Um, we get along so well. Um, our freshmen bring so much energy, um, and I think it really uh, brings the returning players um, back and just gives us so much more excitement. Our locker room is crazy. Um, even on the sidelines, you can just tell the energy in the room um, is so much better. And in volleyball, you really need that energy to carry you through um, when you're in really tight games. Uh, you guys' next game is a road game against California uh, next weekend, this upcoming weekend. Uh, how do you guys prepare for that? What are you guys doing to prepare for that game? Well, we've spent time. Uh, we'll, we'll spend the, the bulk of our time on the first opponent, California, for Friday night. We've already been into the video uh, of them. Um, we'll do a little bit more of that today um, at Wednesday's practice. And then Thursday will be um, almost exclusive prep for that. And then, uh, you know, you go out and... and and, and you try to do the things that you've planned to do and make the adjustments that you need to make and, and, and hope that you'll, you'll be successful. Well, hopefully everything goes smooth and you guys can pull the W this weekend. Thank you for joining me today, Coach. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. And up next is BTO. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at KU TV Sports, and for all updates on KU Athletics, be sure to head over to KUBears.com. This weekend, the football team heads into action against Westchester at 12.05 p.m. This is a very important matchup for the Golden Bears to so try to make it out to Westchester to support the team. 
The soccer team takes the field against Mercyhurst here at KU. Kickoff is at 1 p.m. on Keystone Field behind Opaque Fieldhouse. Come out to support the team for this big game. Be sure to tune in next week when we will be chatting with the men's and women's tennis teams. And remember, outside the lines, you only get the scores. But here at Between the Lines, we get you in the locker room.